Fozia there. Oh my God, she has an incredibly beautiful voice. Totally love her. Kariburi Sana to Full Circle with Mukali triple one triple four triple one. That is our SMS line. Send in your questions. Remember, we are looking for winners. Natalie Natalia of Unafraid Enterprise came with her beautiful products over here, and she paired them in two. So we have two gift hampers. So we're looking for two winners. And all you have to do is tell us what was unique about her products. And there's a seventeen percent discount if you buy through our Switch TV K, and it ends on the 18th that is sunday of this month so mm -hmm. everyone gets lucky until sunday so send that in triple one triple four triple one what was unique about her product right now though we're going to get into a very interesting conversation would you ever consider to get into business with your friend we've talked about family before but have you ever considered getting into business with your friend please send in your answers share your stories with us it's time for HR Circle. A Chiang is in the building. She is such a vibe, by the way. I just have to say, you were here so early. Your hair stands out. Your glasses are so unique. And it's just, you know. <laughs> Don't stop. Don't I stop. I will not. <laughs> have you seen her earrings and her shoes? Okay, now I stop. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. And we are happy to have you. You have many titles, kindly, and businesses as well. <laughs> this is your camera. Do not even hold back. Good morning. My name is Achieng Butler. I am the CEO of Digital Beehive, which is a digital marketing and consulting agency uh, that I founded about a year and a half ago. Uh, before that, I had founded another agency, and we eventually evolved into Digital Beehive. Mm -hmm. Besides doing that, I do consultancy as well, independent consultancy in digital marketing and strategic marketing. I've worked for 30 years, but who's counting? Nobody. 30 years. <laughs> Not us. <laughs> in uh, corporate. So mm -hmm. I worked across Coca-Cola, Airtel Africa. I worked for Danone in Paris. Um, so I've, you know, been around a while. Yeah. And so um, I do a lot of strategic um, guidance and counseling and consulting with different organizations focused mostly on social impact because mm -hmm. that's kind of a passion area as I've gotten older in life. Mm -hmm. And then in my free time, I do a lot of mentorship and a lot of coaching. Um, so I coach a lot of young people. I figured if you've worked for 30 years, you've probably picked up a thing or two Main along things. the way. <laughs> and so I coach um, young people, mostly 18 to 30, but also um, the 18 to 30s is actually more of mentorship, I'd say. Okay. Um, and then the older, um, slightly older, or let's say uh, 30 plus uh, um, uh, men and women that I work with, it's more of coaching as they get into mid-career and sort of get into crossroads. Um, I do a lot of coaching with them as well. So this ties in with what Manish was saying. That is what you do because he said he was 42 and he needed a coach yes. at that particular point. Yes. I find that usually when people to get to about 35, mm -hmm. they tend to sort of get restless or stuck and I'm not quite sure which way to go yeah and so I, I generally work with a lot of people within the 35 to 40 let's say 40 45 year bracket okay yes okay. and stuck you that is what we do <laughs> yes I help you unstuck yourself <laughs> you know um, but with a big focus on actual actually action oriented coaching okay as okay. opposed to kind of very strategic hands-off coaching mm. I really try to make it very action oriented because I want to make sure that you get the results and you get unstuck okay yeah okay today we're talking about you know getting into business with friends mm -hmm. which business is this and the, what is it that you're doing with friends is is it something that you're doing yourself or is it something that you've seen happening over the years so um, I'd say a little bit of both okay. um, I started a career series on Instagram called Career Under Construction. Mm -hmm. uh, my Instagram is at Attitude. Yes. And the reason I started it, and that's really what brought me to here, you know, to this place today, was yes. the reason I started it, I figured I know so much, I've learned so much along the way as a corporate person in different organizations, whether it's multinationals, global multinational or regional multinational or smaller companies, you pick up so much along the way. And I wanted to share that. Okay. Now, as part of that process, I shared all the tips and tricks, and I do share all the tips and tricks around what I've learned. But one of the biggest learnings for me was when you decide to do business with a friend, mm -hmm. and sometimes it doesn't always 
work out as gloriously as it is when you're hanging out, yes. having a good time, a nice yes. meal, nice drinks, going on vacation. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very different ball game. Mm -hmm. So I actually did one of the, 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 the episodes was on doing business with friends mm -hmm. and that got a lot of kind of buzz we and lots up, of people talking. I think it's, yeah. it's one of the places you end up finding yourself in without yes. really thinking about it. Yeah. So we hang out, we hang out. Ching is such cool people yes. and she has such an amazing sense of fashion. And we're like, you know, every time I'm asking where you got that piece and you're like, you know what, we could start a business yes. where I just bring in the pieces. You, you're very good at marketing, so you do it. So we do not think about the bigger picture, but we're already in a business yeah. with no structure. No structure, no strategy, no strategy that defines what exactly you're gonna do, who are you targeting? Yes. And then do you even have the skills that complement each other. Oh. You know, just because we get along and have a great time when we go on holiday or go out in the, you know, for drinks or dinner in the evening, mm. doesn't mean that we're gonna have a whale of a time. You know, friendship is friendship, business is business. Yes. And if you bring friendship and business together, then you really have to be very clear on what each of you are bringing to the table and how you're going to run that business. What is each person contributing and then how are you gonna hold each other accountable? Mm -hmm. You know, yes. if you don't then, the chances are very high that it will go all the way downhill. Yes. The business as well as the friendship. That because is so it does true. cause a strain. So what are we supposed to be looking out for if we want to get into a business with a friend? So the first thing is don't make the assumption that just because you're friends, if one friend gets an opportunity at a business, don't make the assumption that you're you're gonna be part of, you know, you know, part, you know, make money with your friend. Mm -hmm. Because the first thing you are is friends. If it is business, what you need to be looking for is what do you need to be able to make that business a success? So let's let's use a scenario. Let's okay. say you, you've gotten a contract to, to do some work for a company um, and you realize, oh, Cheng is my good friend and we get on really well, I wanna get her in. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, does Cheng have the skills that I need to be able to deliver on this contract? Okay. Number one. Number two, does she have the work ethic that will enable me to deliver this. Number three, does she have the maturity to actually separate yes. friendship from business? Mm. So that if you're calling me at midnight to say this thing is due at six in the morning, I hope you're on it, that I'm not sort of there feeling injured and upset because gosh, I need my beauty sleep. <laughs> kazi ni kazi, business is business. Yes. I need to be getting on with it mm. because it's due at six o'clock in the morning. So one, I like what you mentioned earlier when you say that uh, you need to be very, very careful that they have the discipline mm -hmm. to do all the skills. So they, they might be very good with the skill. You know, they're very good with probably uh, doing the accounts or keeping books yeah. and they're very good, yeah. but they're not disciplined. Exactly. So they're very good at this, but it's the kind of person who'll be like, I need some more time to do this. So that means you'll always be late to deliver because the skill is there but then there is no discipline. Exactly. That work ethic is, su it, it's, it's really a make or break. Mm, mm. It's such a yes, make or break. Is. I mean, if, you know, they could, and the problem with being friends is that while you may want to support each other, it's so easy for me to even be late and say, you know, sorry, I'm running late. You know, the kid this, and it yes. might happen once because yes. some, you know, stuff happens. Maybe the mm -hmm. kid is unwell. Yes. But it's very easy for people to take advantage of that, of each other when they're friends doing business together? And where do you draw the line? Where do you draw the line? I don't know, it's so difficult. It's so difficult, which is yeah. why one of the things I always recommend, first of all, be very, very clear on the expectations of okay. each other, you know, mm -hmm. from each other. Mm -hmm. If, if you're, you've gotten that contract and you're giving me an opportunity to, you know, you're giving me a gig to work yes. with you on that. Because, yes. you know, we're working in the gig economy and it's such, <laughs> yes. it, that's how so many young people are operating now. Mm -hmm. I have to be clear of what your expectations of me are. Okay. But I also have expectations of you. Are you running things? Are you going to be coordinating, managing, leading the team? What does leading the team look like? And because I'm a friend and maybe there's a couple of other people of other vendors you're working with, what does leading us look like? How do you make sure that it's fair for everybody? The other thing you want to think about is what's the contract? We're not just going to agree, ah, yeah, let's do this, or we'll make money and leave it at that. Yeah. How do we make sure that you're contracting even with your friend mm. and there is a clear contract or work order so that I am very clear on what the deliverables are? Yes. Because if anything goes wrong, 
if I don't come through, if I do not deliver, you have to be able to have something to then come up to me with. Yeah. and say this is not working mm. or you need to step up on XYZ yes. as per the contract or else this arrangement I, is most not going to work. people don't do that. People be like, don't do that. We'll just be like, we're in it together. Let's see what comes up. Then we'll divide them. Yeah. But then your input might not have been the same as their input. And because they're your friend, you'll be like, you know what? That's just fine. And then it's not fine at some point. Yes. So they'll be looking at you wondering, <clears throat> but it was okay. But you didn't say anything. See, it worked out. Why aren't we not doing the same thing? So I'm going to throw it to you guys. Have you ever gotten into business with your friend? And were they even your friend? You know how you get into business with people and you think they're your friend? Then Anakurusha, Kila Kitu, and you're stuck. It was your gig. You were giving them just a small bit of it, but that they take over and kick you out of it. Have you ever experienced that? Triple one, triple four, triple one. Is it working out for you? Switch TV KE on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. Please share your stories with us. We'll be right back after this break with the Ching Battle. Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mukali. And I see your SMSs. So please let me know, um, have you experienced working with a friend? Starting a business with a friend, how did it go? Did it work out? Are you struggling in it? Walikurusha, what exactly happened? Switch TV KE on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. There's someone who says, hi Mukali, I love your show. She said she's been working for 30 years. Kwani, how old is she? <laughs> she doesn't look a day past 31. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> We're talking about getting into business with friends. And like I was mentioning um, during the break, that mm -hmm. there's a business I'm looking at. And there's a friend of mine who is also looking at, you know, us doing the business together. Mm -hmm. So it's also... The things I see and I'm like, huh, how will I handle that? Will I be able to take that to the end? Um, do I say yes? Do I say no? How much money has she put into the business already? Because I am joining the business. Mm -hmm. So there's so many questions around that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what you would say about that. So that's, I mean, it's a really perfect scenario. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is, number one, make sure that you have a partnership agreement. Okay. And I'm speaking from personal experience. Ooh. I didn't do that and okay. it cost me. Because when you go into business, it's not for a month. Mm -hmm. This is a business, you want to do it. You know, the gentleman who was here earlier spoke about leaving a legacy yes. with your business. So yes. you're doing this for the long haul. Have a partnership agreement and be very clear in that agreement. Who's doing what? Who's bringing what into this business? What is the role of each of you? The fact that it's a business that's been in existence for a while yes. means that, you know, there's a thing they call founder syndrome. Yes. You just feel you've loved that business. It is yours and it's mm. yours. And even mm. if you bring someone in, you almost feel like you have a bigger stake because you started it. So that can really create some, some very slippery dynamics over time and cause a strain on your friendship. Which means that, w which is why when you, f you know, when you start or if you choose to join, mm -hmm. formalize everything be clear what are you bringing in okay. if the person is bringing in the money mm -hmm. what are you bringing in are you bringing in the network are you bringing in the contacts are you bringing in the, the you know the marketing be very clear so that it never gets to a point where if there's any um difference the, the, any differences that you may have yeah. that the person doesn't say in any case i put in all the money mm. i mean what have you done what have you done they need to be able to to value and you need to be able to quantify the kind of value that you are bringing in. Did you lose the job, the company, the business, or did you lose the friendship? The f I, first of all, I ran from the friendship, ran for my life. I'm just gonna be, you know, keep it real like that. Yes. It was a friend who was more of an acquaintance. We didn't know each other very well. Okay. The person was bringing in a very specific set of skills. Mm -hmm. I brought in the money. Okay. I invested in the business. Having said that, over time, what was clear was we needed my network for the business to grow, which is what I bring. I have a massive network across this continent, and I wanted to focus and specialize on the continent. Mm -hmm. We started a business. We grew it actually to very fast. We got a couple of really amazing contracts, and we worked like crazy. We put together an amazing team, wonderful dynamic. Everybody would go beyond the call of duty to get stuff done. The challenge was we had different value systems. Ah, okay. 
worlds apart. Now, I'm African. I am proud of being African. And I expect people, when they come into our continent to make money, I expect you to value and celebrate people's differences. It's all about diversity. Yes. I'm, all, I'm very big on respect. I'm very big on accountability. If it's to be, it's up to me. And, you know, I have a whole, you know, three or four values that really anchor me, you know, integrity, those sort of things. We just had different value systems. Okay. It was just not sustainable. No. So the good news is yes. not everything was less okay. lost. Okay. Um, I closed down that business mm -hmm. and moved with 80% of the team into this new business. Mm. And so we continued. Okay. Yes, we continued. So we're talking from a place of experience. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can't you see my scars? <laughs> <laughs> I've got we're a few scars. <laughs> We're talking from a place of experience and that makes it even more beautiful because yes. when you need to break up a partnership as well, mm -hmm. you need to be careful. So you're already in this business, it's not working. And that was the point that you were at. Now breaking it up and mm -hmm. being like, this is not working anymore and this is what I will live with and this is what you will live with. If you didn't have the partnership agreement, how do you amicably do this? without losing everything in terms of business and if there's anything to save in the friendship. You know, it, it is a very, very painful process. And that's why I'm talking about it so openly because yes. it's, it, you don't need to go through that. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to make the same mistakes. Mm. Uh, the problem is when you're friends, you feel we trust each other. But the truth is even as friends and even as friends who trust each other, you know, you could grow a business to, to, to millions, billions, and then by the time you're sort of walking away from it, yeah. it just makes it harder to wake, walk away from it. Mm. And it, 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 oftentimes the friendship doesn't survive. In, th in my case, it, it certainly didn't survive. Okay. You know, but I was very fortunate that I worked with a great team. I had a very good a rapport with the team. We have a wonderful working relationship. And so for most of the members that I moved with into this new entity, mm -hmm. you know, were able to continue. And I had a couple of clients who, based on... They came in on the basis of Your you relationship. Know, our relationship, yes. so we continued. You okay. know? And so it, it worked out well in the end. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always work out well in the end. So no. it, you'd rather not take a chance, yes. do everything right from the get-go. That would be my agreement. advice. Yeah. Know what your expectations are of the other person as well as them from you. Yes. So uh, someone says, hi, Mikali, I cannot imagine doing business with my friends. I think we're so different. My best friend tells me they cannot live with me. So if they cannot live with me, I don't know if they can do business with me. <laughs> uh, hi, Mikali. Loving the show. And the ching is beautiful. Uh, so beautiful, actually. Gosh, people, please. <laughs> I have I'm loving a, this. I have a friend <laughs> who likes taking loans from the businesses, but never pays in time. It's becoming too much, and I'm, I'm unable to let them go without draining the friendship. What should I do? So I think they're doing a business together and they keep asking money or taking money from the business as loans and they're not paying that back. And that happens a lot in businesses. That is such a dangerous um, road you're on yes. right now. That's mm -hmm. what I would tell um, the person who's, who's, who sent the message through. Mm -hmm. First of all, you pay taxes. Oh, hopefully you're paying your taxes. And if hopefully. you aren't, please make sure, speak to a, an independent tax consultant because that's the other really big mistake that you make. You need, you're paying your taxes. And as you're make, taking money in and you know, putting money in and taking it out, you're just disrupting your own books. The second thing is that if you're in business and you haven't defined some do's and don'ts, some policies about how you operate, you know, you, you, you have to have some kind of operating principles. It's a big word that really just means what will you allow and won't you. Yes. If I'm taking loans out of this business to go and put money somewhere else, how am I compromising your ability to stock up on whatever it needs you, st you, you need to stock up on to be able to keep this business running? Mm -hmm. And secondly, how are you managing your books? Because it's going to come back to bite you. Yeah. You took money out of this business to do that. You know, when the tax man comes along, mm. how, are you, how are you accounting for all that? Mm -hmm. For those loans? Because the loans are also, you know, there's interest being paid. Yes. Who's paying for the interest? How are you managing it? How are you putting it back? Do you have a system or a structure for how you put the money back? I take a loan maximum for a month. I put it back maybe with interest. I mean, what is the framework that's guiding how the loans are being taken and being repaid? So my advice would be find a, an accountant very, very quickly and sort out your books and also put in place some kind of policies that guide 
the movement of money or stock for that matter, you know, and, and payment terms and all of that. You need to do that. Otherwise, it'll come back and bite you. It'll, you know, it complicates all the things and you'll only find out a year in when it's time to pay your taxes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about friends yeah. who are good friends, not mm -hmm. just acquaintances. Mm -hmm. And with friendship comes drama. Mm -hmm. Drama away from the business. Mm -hmm. Drama could be we are fighting over God knows what out there. And we have business to run. You know, so <laughs> I can see your smile. <laughs> I see I see your smile. Okay. So um, separating that or mm -hmm. being able to deal with business mm. away from the drama that is happening in our other lives. So that is one of the other big risks when you, you, when you work with friends. Mm. I mean, it's not to say that with every friend comes drama when yes. you're doing business. Yeah. It isn't always the case. I work with a very good friend. We've been friends for 30 years. She Ooh. heads my HR and admin. Okay. I adore this lady and she's so professional, so professional. We've never fallen out on anything. But that's because in the same way that she's so professional and makes sure that she gets stuff done, I have to also do right by her. Yes. It would be so easy for me to tell her to just do it and that's, you know, I'll pay you next week or next month mm. or whatever. Mm. It would be so easy because we're such fast friends. But I always tell myself I have to also be accountable to her and do right by her. She gets the job done, I make sure she gets paid. If you're doing business with friends who are not necessarily you know, you, you know, or you've had a tiff. Maybe things were started out all right, mm. but then drama happens. Maybe yeah. you, you know, fell out at um, a, a party or a get together that you guys You're had. Always at parties. Yes, you, you know, you you partied. Somebody drank one too many, and then <laughs> things fell apart. Yes, you know, and then to, on Monday you're in a meeting with the client. How how's that gonna work? If the person or if both of you do not have the maturity to be professional in front of the client, mm -hmm. you can imagine the tension. Now, it's not just tension between the two of you. Yes. If there are other members of the team, then it disrupts the dynamic within the team. Because they can see, they can because feel Because they'll see mm -hmm. and they'll know oh, these two are fighting and mm. they're like, oh boy, you know, how do you lead a team when both of you are not talking and maybe you're the two people who are the two principals in the business? Mm. Or the person is working for you on a project and now you're feeling injured, you don't want to talk to them because you know, you've not yet sort of patched up from the drama of last week. Yeah. It's just completely disruptive. And it needs a lot of emotional intelligence to be, av to be able to work through that. Being mature, to be able to have that conversation, iron things out before you meet the client, to be able to be professional with each other with in front of the team and in front of the client. Yeah. So it's not an easy one. Uh, it's manageable, but it can be, it can be a little tricky. And this happens as well when we are doing business as, you know, as a couple or husband and wife, because we'll have issues outside the office. The trick is to not bring or drag that into the office or into the business. Mm -hmm. So hi, Mukali. Say hi to Aching. Aching, hi. <laughs> um, I believe that men are better doing business together as friends. Kuliko, uh, Kuliko was Chana, because girls fight all. What? Do, do we fight? We do. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. We, I'm not do sure we, we can relate. What, what no. are we talking about? <laughs> okay. Girls, do, girls can do business. You know, I think it's about, I think it's, it's really an individual thing. And it's really about the character of the two people um, and the maturity of the two people. Age has actually nothing to do with maturity. You can find young yes. people are very mature as yes. well. I don't think it's a men are better at it than women. Maybe men have just done b lots of businesses, lots more businesses that are lots more visible than women yeah but in the in the circles that i work in i see a lot of women doing business together mm -hmm. you know um and and it seems to work it's, so it's not a gender thing. it's not a gender thing don't at be all. like that be nice <laughs> okay so you talked about a partnership agreement which is the one thing that i need to do immediately mm -hmm. i get into this business mm -hmm. the roles that each needs to play should also come out from the beginning how we are going to work out the money is also something that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. Is there a ratio to this or does it depend on if we're all bringing in money, then do we also divide each other, every other thing, um, you know, half and half? 
or does it how does it work out so there's a number of ways or models that you can use um, in terms of how you structure it yeah so maybe you're going into the business even if you're going into the business that's already been established are you going in as a 50% shareholder mm -hmm. because they'll, they'll you, I mean obviously you, you have some you, you you sign up to a registered business mm. and you have a certain percentage of shares as does the other person yeah so usually we'll use just as, as a scenario 50 yes. let's say you're 50 50 mm -hmm. it means that maybe when you you know dividing the profits it's 50 50 a big part of that process is also how you do the costing or the pricing because you put in the margins and then of the margins of course you'll pay your taxes maybe you'll pay your staff you'll pay for stock xyz you know whatever is left that's over and above how are you looking to either divide that mm -hmm. share that mm -hmm. or reinvest that into the business so a big part of how you decide on who gets what largely is driven by the shareholding okay Okay. Most, more often than not, it's uh, driven by the shareholding. Having said that, if you're working with somebody who's in business and maybe they are financing it, but they're not the ones actually delivering, mm -hmm. then what you may want to do, uh, then you're probably getting paid for doing the work. Ah. So you, again, back to the costing conversation. Okay. How you cost to ensure that you're being paid like an employee or like a consultant for doing the work this other person is probably just financing it. But it doesn't mean that you have to now wait until the end of the year when you're sharing the profits because you're actually the person delivering from day to day. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that you be paid for the services that you're rendering from day to day because if it wasn't you, it would be somebody else and you'd need to pay them. And this is the dynamic where there's a silent partner who just fuels the business, yes. puts in the money and you get to do the work. Yeah. So the arrangement then is for me to be paid every so often or every month mm -hmm. according to what we've agreed to and not wait for the end because i'm not i'm not an actual partner am i <laughs> you are you're just a, a, a more i, I think there's a, there's a word for it an active partner yes. but the, i don't know what the actual official word for it is mm -hmm. but you are an active partner whereas they're silent they're financing it they want to see profits mm -hmm. but you need to get the job done for the profits to come in okay now yeah so it's 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 usually a function of actually discussing those and what i'd recommend to everyone is speak to a lawyer Ah. Lawyers will guide you on how okay. to frame it mm -hmm. and what the different models and options are mm -hmm. and the best way to structure it in the interest of yourself as, as the person they're, 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 they're advising or counseling, mm -hmm. but also in the interest of the business o overall as well. Okay. I hope guys are taking notes. So we talk, we've talked about breaking up and how that happens. Well, let's talk about protecting yourself, you know, when you're getting into this business and there's you putting in the money or you doing the work or you bringing in the networks and all mm -hmm, of that mm -hmm. but you being able to say this is me protecting myself from anything that would happen if this business goes down what would that scenario look like again i mean for me i always defer to the experts mm -hmm. which is the lawyers i mean not all lawyers are very expensive you can always find an independent lawyer or a smaller sort of law firm mm -hmm. smaller outfit that's you know relatively you know reasonable in terms of price yes but part of, they need to advise you on what is the best um uh, m way or f um i guess i'll call it a uh, fashion or i'll call it a way what's the best way to register your company ah. in a way that protects you. Yes. I know that, for example, if it's a limited company, then if the company goes bust, you know, p they don't seize your, your personal belongings and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. If you have debts, you know, and the business is going bust, what does that mean? You know, the lawyer will be the best in the best position to guide you on how to structure it so that you secure yourself. Because the last thing you want, again, is to go into business. The business ends up in debt. Yeah. And then the next thing, your, your car is your being house. repossessed. Your house is mm. being, you know, okay. you know, being, you know, That's just pos repossessed as well or, yeah. or, or taken up as, you know, to pay up or to sell off and pay up uh, the, the people that you owe. Okay. So, you, you know, always, always um, get advice from a go lawyer. Go the official way. I think yeah. what you're saying in a nutshell is look at this person. Yes, they are your friend but they are your business partners yeah. and put the friendship just on the side for a bit yeah. for the business and get all the legal framework structures put everything in place come on to see rafkiako and then we'll just pick up after working hours exactly we'll pick up after working hours what would be your parting shot as we come to the end of this conversation my parting shot is business is business yes whether you're friends, whether you're acquaintances, business is business. So put every, be very clear on your expectations, be very clear on each other's roles, and most importantly, formalize it. 
get those contracts in, get those work orders in place, speak to a lawyer, speak to an accountant so that when you're going in, you're clear. And that way, your friendship will probably survive. Okay. Yeah. How can people get in touch with you for coaching and mentorship? So um, you can contact me via IG, which mm -hmm. is at attitude. Mm. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> 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 at attitude or via email at you can reach, uh, reach out to me uh, through people at digitalbeehive.net. Okay. Okay. Yeah? Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you. It was great and for to helping meet you. Me. You know there was a personal one in there. <laughs> I'll send the invoice. <laughs> <laughs> it was I'm awesome here to for meet it. You. <laughs> Thank you so so much. And for all you who are tuning in and I see all your questions but our time has run up, please just send them directly to Attitude. And then you just pose after that. So we're looking for winners. Uh, Natalia Unafraid Enterprises. Wanatupatia two hampers to you guys. So I'll just sample a few feedback before I tell you the winners. Hello, Mikali, the uniqueness of unafraid products. I like the way you've written it because you've written it well. It's, uh, it's that every product is made out of natural herbal products, thanks. They're all truly natural compared to others, including ingredients. They are very promising. Hi, Mikali. Say hi to Natalia. I like our products because they are herbal and good for the scalp too. And I need that hamper. I've been struggling a lot with my natural hair. It's Brenda. Hi, we call it. It's Miriam from the Taita Taveta. Natalie's products are so unique in that it cont they contain so many remedies uh, just in a single product. Okay, okay, okay. I see you. But uh, we have to choose a winner, right? So we have two winners and I'm just going to let you know who those are. Where are my winners? Okay, here we go. Uh, good morning, Mukali. I'm Rose from Tika. The products are unique because they're all natural. They moisturize and nourish the hair, uh, the hair, and they make the hair dark. The best thing is I can go for the longest time without blow drying, which is like a game changer because heat damages the hair so much. Please give me the products. Your number ends at 698. Congratulations, you get a hamper. Mukali at an afraid pro natural product. Uh, they have what? Uh, what? I have liked about this. Hair product is, they are made purely from natural ingredients like moringa, coffee, hibiscus, and many more. Second, I like the product that you apply and you don't need to do any blow dry. That is amazing. My daughter who is five years old, has uh, curly black long hair, and I think natural is the way to go for her till she becomes of age. When she becomes of age, I would like to try this product. So that, what are you saying? Frida and Yuki, you get a hamper for your daughter. Your number ends at 651. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for choosing us every single day. We don't take it for granted. We love you, love you, love you, love you. Can't wait to have these conversations and more with you every single morning. So let's do this all over again tomorrow. Adios.